while Jamie's unloading the van for a rod out and some fizzing just in the margin there. And off she rattles. Come, boys, in you come. Funny looking thing, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome to. Welcome to Old Oaks. There we go. Is it in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to see how we got on at Old Oaks in France, then watch this film. It's a five acre lake. There's fish all the way up to 82 pounds, and that's a big, big common. There's a backup common up to 70 as well. And I've actually lost count how many 40s and 50s there are in here. The swim's all along one bank. As I say, there's five of them with a margin all the way along the bank, which is tree lined and snaggy. So watch how we got on. Welcome to Spotlight. Hopefully a sign of things to come. On the 80 out of it. That's what I want. The 80. Well, we arrived at Old Oaks on Saturday, and the first day went very, very quickly. We was trying to get our bearings, work out where we was going to fish. I decided to fish up that end. Simon's decided to fish up this end, so we can just spread ourselves around a little bit, and if we see anything, we can react to it. Okay, so this is the first chance I'm getting to walk around the actual lake. Yesterday it was raining when we turned up. We wanted to get everything set up. We hadn't had no sleep. So now I'm fully refreshed. Batteries are charged. We're going to have that walk around. Now, you'll see I've got three poles in my hand here. And the reason for that is not very far to the back margin for my swim. So I'm going to take them around. And there's a few gaps there that I noticed a bit of disturbance yesterday when we were setting up at the corner of my eye. And if I do get the chance to be able to put a washing line across the lake, line pressure, particularly on a small lake this, like this, uh, can be a big factor. So relieving as much line as possible could be a winner. And if I do get the opportunity to take that line out of the water, having it going across, and literally just coming off the bank, drooping down, I can spoon feed a bit of bait in from the other side and just hopefully sit on them um, rigs. Now, like I said, I have seen things out the corner of my eye yesterday and everything seemed to be really, really tight to the margin. I'm not sure whether there's an undercut there or something, so at least with a stick like this, I can go along their margins and I can just have a little bit of a feel around the bottom there just to see what we've got there um, and make a decision what we're gonna do. I'm going to leave these out in different places around the lake over there. So if I do want to swap and change, I've already got areas that I, I've already highlighted as a potential uh, an area to get a bite. And I can just go straight back over there. I've done all the putting into the ground previous to that. And I can just put the line straight onto the clips. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just hoping we're going to see something. I really, really want to see something there so i'm going right okay this is what i need to do and then we need to work out how we're going to catch them which can be a completely different thing because at the moment i'm not sure what rigs to use because i'm not sure what's on the bottom i'm not sure what we've got out there um but yeah if i'm underneath them bushes on that bank you're pretty much guaranteed it's going to be choddy and there's going to be leaf debris there so let's go and have a look and we can make a decision what we're going to do so this is an area that um Yesterday down here was really, really chocolatey and disturbed up. It's not like that now. So what, what, what was here yesterday is not here at the moment, or they're not here feeding, grubbing the bottom up. Um, which is a good thing for me, because it could be up my end of the lake, but <laughs> it was a small lake, they move around a lot. So we're pretty much between peg one and peg two. Simon's over there now, but he's got a nice little bank here where he's got an ideal situation to put a washing line across. So something he may need, want to or think about exploring later on. But uh, he's got his way, own way of fishing at the moment and he's gonna stick to that. And the last time I fished with Simon in France, he stuck to his guns all the way through the week Really, really slow. Final day at the late record. 
biggest fish in the lake, you couldn't, you couldn't have scripted it. So if you haven't seen that one, check out the Bernier video as well. This pine tree here, next to this silver birch, is the tree directly opposite my swim, which is where we've seen the carp along the bank there. So um, the question is, is trying to get to it. I'm not going to be able to put a washing line here, that's for sure. There's too much bramble and stuff. But what is very, very interesting, this is all blackberry bushes. And these blackberry bushes are overhanging that water edge. And it's the only place so far that I've seen blackberry bushes. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the carp are here with a natural food source literally clumped all the way around this area where they're showing. And even if they're not after the fruit off the, the berries, it could be after the bugs that are falling off the bushes. That's interesting. Okay, so this is another area that I've seen disturbance. It's about 20 yards up further from that. Very, very similar again. We've got all this undergrowth here. And then along the edge of the water, we've got blackberries again. So they can't, that's not a coincidence. It can't be a coincidence. The only two places that we've seen these particular shrubs or bushes are where we're seeing fish. And whatever it is, they're, I don't know. It's, it, I don't think it's the fruit because the fruit aren't out properly yet, but I think it's probably grubs or caterpillars falling off these bushes because they are over the water edge a little bit. fish all over it. Literally five foot from the bank that way there is a shelf it goes and it's a sheer shelf and there's a load of root matter just along the front of it and then at the bottom of that shelf it's probably about say two to three foot deep but it is very very polished very very gravelly very very clean and I know I can present a bait really really well in there and I need to be tight and then you go a little bit further and then it's a bit choddy, there's a few branches, but right up against literally five foot or off this bar, uh, off the bed or bank, it's clear, really clear. And I found two spots now that I'm really confident of putting a bait on and I just hope we get a fish of them. It's gonna take a couple of days to work this lake out, for sure. But I think once we work out how to trip them up, would be all right. We, we do know that this is not a big fish hit water. Um, so it is, a, it's not a numbers game on here. It's a quality game. And the average in here is 50 pounds. So uh, if we get something, it's gonna, it's gonna be a decent fish. There are some small ones in there as well, but an average of 50, you can't complain with that. And carp going up to 83, I think it was 82, 83 pound. Um, Got to be in it to win it. That'd be, definitely be a, that'd be a PB for me. So I don't normally talk about bait, but uh, on this occasion I'm going to. So this is what I'm actually using at the moment. In here, in this mix, we've got uh, two four and eight milk pellet and a little bit of corn, which you've just seen me add with some hemp. Now the main ingredients is smashed up squid boily by incubate um, i've had a lot of success on that and breaking that up it's highly um, digestible got a load of feeding signals and yeah that's the main ingredients i've got some holes in there as well i've put some other off cuts of other boilies in that that i've had sitting in my bag for quite a while but the main ingredients is squid now i have got also in my van some cans of tuna now that's something that I used to use years and years ago, uh, particularly on the Mets and Thorny Weir, to great success, mixing tuna and brine in with flakes, in with my, um, my mix. So if I don't have anything, um, yeah, if it's a bit slow, I'll add that at a later date. But going by putting this out yesterday, and when I walked around to that side of the lake earlier, I just had my first walk around, 
One of the areas that I've been introducing this last night absolutely erupted, which was one of the reasons why I walked away from the swing quite quickly. So I know they're there because they're attracted to it because they was literally right on top of it when I got around there. So yeah, I'm liking that, that spot over there. And if I do get a fish, I do believe it's gonna be from that particular area. But this is certainly working because it has drawn the fish in already. Now I've just got to work out how to get them to pick up the actual hook bait, which is probably going to be a little bit more challenging because of the lake bed over there. So that's all about the presentation. We've got the fish there. We now need to present the bait so they can pick it up easy and get that hook set. So you're going to use a bait boat? I'm going to use a bait boat. And um, nothing really happened did it, on the first day. Very nothing quiet. happened on the second day. Very quiet. Other than our baits were, well, our rigs were coming back with no baits on, weren't they? The only thing that came back was a pop-up. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else was gone. So it soon become apparent that there's some nuisance fish in here. And um, yeah, I went round the back and looked around the margin. There was some balls of some pross on chat. And actually I flicked a worm out and as soon as I put a worm out, literally it went straight away, reeled in a big possible shat with a belly like that. It was huge, it looked like it was pregnant. Uh, but it wasn't, it was just gouging on all the fish mill bait that we put in. And um, that was the reason why our rigs were coming back with nothing on. Mark, how do I get these off my hook without stabbing myself? So we had to react on that knowledge that we gained while we was here over the last couple of days because we went into day three and it was still a little bit quiet other than the fact that there was one rig that I put out up in the far corner and put a pop-up, yellow pop-up with just corn and that was it. Corn over the top and that rod went. Fish just showed literally right in front of mine. Right, I'm in the middle of the water now. Sorry, I've got this mic on that. I'm happy now. Just concentrate, get it in. That's off. And the hard work as well. Gutted. Me too. But um, yeah, we had to go up to the shop, didn't we? We did, and we stocked up heavily on sweet corn. How many cans of sweet corn did you buy? Uh, I think we got 16 each. I think the, the people in the store were looking at us like, <laughs> what are these guys doing? It was, uh, it was quite amusing. Yeah, so it was 32 cans of sweet corn I think you bought in total. Yep. Let's just hope these changes work. And uh, the sweet baits, uh, if, if anything, the sweet baits and the bait we've got out there now are gonna stay there longer for the carp to find them. Isn't it? It's gone down deep now. Sign of a big one, mate. It's come out the margin. And it's now in the bottom 12 foot of water. Flies all over my legs while I've had a shower. And like the soap. Fingers crossed that they are for a few lost fish, mate. Yeah. A few lost fish. I am a little bit, I must admit. <laughs> you always, when you lose a couple, you start thinking. Oh, and then I'm starting to think now, how snaggy is that margin? It's not common. How snaggy is that margin out there? How many am I going to potentially lose in them snags? That's why everything's locked up now. Sitting on the rods. I 
Oh my god, look at the hook. The hook's slowly just in its mouth. That was just there. The hook was just there. Oh, so that's slightly bigger than the last one. Hmm. It's got more shoulders. Started, isn't it? It's all started. On the munch. I think so. Sudden, everything just seems different today. You got a feather behind you, at? Yeah, you like Lucky it? feather. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems different today. That heavy rain. The heavy rain spurred them on. I don't know. I feel it in my bones. Black spot. There we go. <laughs> 47 pound of old oaks, finest, finally starting to come together now. The bait worked. The bait worked, yes. So the bait worked as soon as we were putting it out there. Um, you yeah, had a, a fish within 10, 15 minutes of the bait going out. Handful of sweet boilies with just corn, a single pop up and bush, 47 pound get in there and they go a lot bigger. The average in this lake, so I've been told, is 50 pounds, so we're not far off it. But it's all importantly, there's an 80 pounder in there and a couple of backup 70s. And we're about halfway through now. On the bank, job done. But, what happened next? So this morning, my left hand rod shot off and I got a 51. There's one thing I just want to add to this. Simon's got another 50, but you haven't actually had a 30 or a 40 yet, have you? Nope. No. So he, <laughs> in the France and in the UK. He's just skipping <laughs> 30s and 40, uh, 40s, he's just having 50s and 60s. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuffed um, with the big ones, you know. Too real, this ain't metaphoric. I'm I've been trying to work the lake out, what's best, what's working. I find the Poisson chats are destroying everything I'm putting out. So me and Mark made the decision to switch over to sweet baits. Went to a local tackle shop, got some boily, got some sweet corn from a store. And yeah, first morning of having the bait out. Got a fish in the sling. <clears throat> So, there it is, 51 pound mirror from Old Oaks. Four days in and I think we finally cracked it and we know what we're doing. So let's get this one back and hope for some more. There's a mega fish in here, but it's a tricky little lake. It's a tricky little lake. It's not been easy. But I do feel like we're, we're getting somewhere now though. 100%. The, the switch over a bait has boosted my confidence. 100%. 100%. I feel at the beginning of this week, with what was happening, I was thinking, oh, we're going to be lucky to get one or two fish out of here. Mm -hmm. And we started looking at some of the reviews and some people have struggled, other people have, have had it off. But the people who had it off, I think they've realised quite early that ditch the fish mill, boilies. Yeah. And... Um, it's working for us as well. So now we're halfway through this session, well, through this week, and um, actually I do feel confident we're gonna have a few more now. Mm. Don't leave me hanging, <laughs> 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 I'm really happy after I had that fish this morning. Um, I've walked down here to swim one and I've seen a lot of signs that there's carp, 
fizzing in the corner. We saw a little show, so I decided to grab one of the rods, chuck it in this corner, and see how I get on. Run and grab a coffee from Jamie. Um, as I'm walking back down, I can hear my rod screaming off, run, hit it, and it snagged. Um, quickly ran and grabbed my waders, walked all the way around. No. Mark came and gave me a hand, and uh, yeah, got in, tried to find the fish, the found my rig on a branch, freed it, Mark reeled it in, and yeah, it seems there's a lot more fish down here than there has been. So I'm putting another rod out, and I think I'm just gonna spend the day down here, try and see if I can nick one or two. Maybe if I do get a lot, then I'm probably gonna bring the bed shad down here and sleep under the stars. Yeah, fingers crossed. Who's gonna catch a big fish? You? Where are you gonna catch it? Which rod are you gonna catch the big one on? This one? You wanna sit on that one? Cause you're gonna catch a big one. All right then, come on. There you go. Go on, mini side. Go catch the big one. It's coming slowly. Yeah, I haven't used it yet. Here we go, what was it? That's a common. That's a grassy. Oh, f <laughs> Never caught a grass cut before. <laughs> I'm scared. Oh, God. That's why it's not fighting. <laughs> Is that what they're like? <laughs> common. I literally. <laughs> oh, here we go. I just want to tie her out. The more I tie her out, the better, right? They don't tie her out. Do they not? Break my net! There we go. Oh, oh. Right, tell me when to drop. I'm scared. Forty-eight pounds of old oaks grass carp. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, um, but where there's grassies, there's usually some carp following it, or vice versa. They're following the carp. But either way, I'm gonna put this back before it knocks me out, and uh, <laughs> hopefully get onto an actual carp. But it's a first, so thank you, Mr. Grassy, and you can go back. I'd be impressed with all, mate. You up <laughs> with a barb. So you go, off you pop. Whoa! Little grassy, 40, 48 pounds. Not so little really, but yeah, I've had enough of him. He can go back. Go on, mate, off your shoot. They're not so bad. You don't have another one? They're not bad. Um, no, but they're not bad. We've come to another end of another day and it's been a quiet one. But the fish are still over that far margin. We've got rigs over there and it's only a matter of time before I suppose they come on the feed. Um, yeah, bit of a downer from Simon's success this morning because I thought this day was going to be actually quite productive, but it hasn't been. But it doesn't mean that they, they can, you know, they can switch on just like that, and then it's a yeah, different situation totally.
I was happy with the first one. I'm not so happy with the second. I had the rod. My hand's ready above the rod, but <laughs> I didn't want to hit it in case it wasn't. Here we go. And then it, I just saw the line pull and I thought, it's a grassy. No, it's not. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Lift the rod up. No. Don't say that. Uh... Would you believe it? It's the last day now and um, yeah, today I've just thrown zigs out all day and I've rested the area that I was uh, putting bait in. I haven't seen any fish all week up the end of the lake they've been up here, but the winds shifted today and uh, started blowing that way. And for the first time all week, I've had fish in my swim. Now, one of the spots where I was pre-baiting and introduced quite a bit of bait, and I've been putting a little and often in there, hoping that the fish were gonna come into the swim. And sure enough, about, I think it was about five o'clock this afternoon, I noticed a couple of shows over that baited area. So I quickly round it, wound in my rods, got my stalking rod, went over to the corner so I could cast to the show in an area. Now all week I've been taking the bait boat out there because I wanted to get lots of bait out there quite quickly with little disturbance and doing it with the bait boat was just the easiest option. However, when I see them fish showing, I cast the rod straight on top of the head. I felt really confident actually it was gonna go because like I say, it's the first time I've actually seen fish down there this week and lay down, GoPro ran out of battery and uh, she rattled off and yeah, started playing my, well, I can't remember what, how many fish it is now, but anyway, I started playing a fish. And um, as I was just landing the fish, I turned around and there's Jamie just coming over with the, um, with the main camera and he just managed to get the last bit of the, uh, the landing of the fish. Come on. Oh, long. Oh. Good one. Fish. Um, and underestimated it a little bit because I thought it's about 30 pounds, but it was far from 30 pounds, it was uh, 49 pounds. I thought this was 30 pound. It's a slightly bigger 30 pound 49. Long fish. Long, long fish. <laughs> but um, that just goes to show how f I am at, um, yeah, guesstimating weight of fish. <laughs> well, there we go. It's been a struggle for me and that's fishing, that's the way it goes sometimes. If they're not in your swim, they're not in your swim. And sometimes certain lakes just don't work out for certain individuals and this one hasn't really for me. I've lost a few fish, I've had a couple as well, but I just feel like I should have had more. Um, and if I had a little bit longer, maybe I would have more now they're up that end of the lake. So yeah, final night and uh, back home tomorrow. So it's the last night. I'm hoping to get one or two more. At least one would be great. That isn't a grass cup. Tactics pretty much exactly the same. Two rods on the right hand side. One of them I've come in a little bit more, so it's a little bit deeper. The left hand rod, well, there's a seven foot bar that I've been baiting up for the last two days now. And I'm hoping that baiting up will pay off and I'll get myself a nice decent cup. Big one. A big one. 50, 60, 70 pound, 80 pound, <clears throat> would be lovely. Until I do that, any fish that I'm seeing rolling or crashing, I'm gonna cast straight to it just to see if I can nick one before then. So fingers crossed, looks like a good night, but so has every other night this week. <laughs> and it just hasn't paid off. But hopefully the last night, magic happens, just like at Bernie Air when I caught the 60. Well, that's it. Oh, 
There's a fish on here, mate. Yeah, it's grassy. Oh. <laughs> That's a rat. That's a rat. <laughs> Alright, anyway, as I was saying, done till dying day. Another grass, we've had a few of these this week. But um, yeah, we didn't give in, we kept going, we kept going. It's a lovely lake. This lake's actually really, really good for social because all the swims are on one side of the bank. So um, yeah, La Rouge is around the corner, which is owned by the same owner of Old Oaks. And all bookable through angling lines. Could be simpler. I've said it before, they sort everything out for you. And um, yeah, that is definitely a wrap.